Hello friends, how are you? In this video, I'm going to discuss about uh, generally accepted accounting principles and this is part 2. We've already discussed uh, part 1 and in that part we have taken some basic accounting principles, right? So, uh, let's quickly move on to generally accepted accounting principles. So, what are generally accepted accounting principles? These are set of commonly followed accounting rules, okay? Rules and standards for financial accounting, right? So, in order to maintain uniformity and consistency in financial accounting stand uh, records, GAAP has been developed. Okay, just like cricket rules. We play a game of cricket, everybody, the rules are everywhere, the rules are same. So, you know, all of us know, we are laymen, all of us know that uh, this is 6, this is LBW, right? So, similarly, these are the rules in accounting. Okay, so that every organization must know every auditor know every lawyer know that uh, you know this is it this is the main bunch right so these are the main things now we are moving on to the concepts in GAAP okay there are many concepts in uh, GAAP but uh, I'm going to discuss some important ones which uh, may come in exam some important ones from exam point of view others are uh, others are uh, fairly complex okay and uh, these concepts need basic understanding so let's start with the first one okay number one is business entity concept so what is business entity concept business entity concept is like business has its own entity okay this is the entity is different than the owner's entity for the purpose of accounting we take business as a separate entity okay then owner brings in some money which is liability of the business to the owner. Owner puts some money, okay, and uh, this is the liability of the business to the owner. Now we have money measurement concept. What is money measurement concept? Only those transactions which can be quantified in terms of money are allowed to be recorded in accounting books. Okay, like uh, if uh, I am an employee of uh, the company and I have been given a free ride by someone to the office and uh, you know I reach the office but I cannot put the bill because I don't have the bill so this transaction this is a small transaction but this cannot be put in the accounting uh, of books but if I take a cab I put the bills the company will pay me the, the company will reimburse me and this transaction will be there in the company bills okay third one is going concern right Going concern assumes that a business firm would continue to carry out its operations indefinitely or for a very, uh, you know, long period of time, right? For a long period of time, a business, uh, you know, for accounting considers that a business business would not wind up in two or three years. Okay, so this is uh, the point. Now the fourth one is accounting period. Okay, what does it say? It says the span of time after which financial statements of an enterprise would be prepared. It, it says about the span of time, normally annual. Okay, we have a financial year April to March. Okay, and uh, the annual, uh, the final results of the company we prepare in the end of March. That's why we say March closing, right? Closing of the accounts. So this is uh, the accounting period, but you know, you can, you can also prepare semi annually. Okay. You can prepare quarterly, but preparing annually is the standard practice. Now, fifth, the cost concept, all assets are recorded in books of accounts at their purchase price, which includes the cost of acquisition and we have transportation, installation, etc. The concept of cost is historical in nature as the value of asset will not change in books to the market value. So this is, uh, uh, you know, one deformity, one disadvantage. Like we have taken the cost of an asset 10 years ago, 10,000 rupees in the books of accounting, it is 10,000 rupees. But like, you know, if it is land, then the cost, the market cost will increase, right? If it is a machine, the market cost will decrease. Okay. Then we have dual aspect this is basic principle of accounting this principle states that every transaction has a dual 
a two-fold effect. We have discussed this in our previous video also and should therefore be recorded in two places, right? So two accounts will be involved and recording in recording the transaction. For example, a firm, an organization, it purchased some goods, let's say for 10 lakhs, okay? This will increase the assets, the stock of goods will increase. Okay, the raw material will uh, increase. This is also an asset. Okay, so one asset, it increases. On the other hand, the cash with the company. Cash will decrease because we give cash to the, uh, you know, the, our supplier, right? So, the transaction happens at the two places and will be recorded in our books at two places. So, this is, uh, this is the main thing. Okay, we learned about the, uh, that's, uh, accounting equation also like assets is equal to liabilities plus capital so assets of a firm are equal to owner's equity what is owner's equity owner's equity is capital capital is what the owner or the promoter puts initially okay and creditors equity equity liabilities are what loans and loans are what creditor who is the creditor bank bank is the creditor so it is a bank bank's equity in the company right so this is uh, the form this is the thing it forms the basis of double entry bookkeeping now seventh one is revenue realization concept so what is revenue realization concept revenue should be included in books only when it is realized okay and what does it mean revenue is a gross inflow of cash okay arising from sale of goods or sale of services of an buy an enterprise or maybe interest earned, dividend earned, commission earned by an enterprise, right? So revenue is realized when legal right to receive it arises. Like I have made the sale today. Okay, the bill date is of today. Maybe payment I may get after two days or if my relations are good, I may get it after 10 days. I say to the a supplier okay give me after 10 days but the sale is realized today so this is called revenue realization concept this is a standard practice okay this is it it this is like it should be done this way okay then we have matching concept what is what does it say all the revenues earned during an accounting year whether received that year like uh, all that uh, like uh, i made a sale okay of 10 lakh right but my distributor says i will give uh, you 5 lakh rupees now and i will give 5 lakh rupees in january next year suppose this is december but uh, okay in april but financial year ends in march right but the sale it happened in march so according to revenue realization uh, this uh, revenue has been done okay payment has not been made but revenue has been done so it will be recorded in books in this year okay so this is what it says we have to match like uh, all the costs incurred expenses whether paid during that year or not should be taken into account while ascertaining profit or loss so this is for ascertaining the profit and loss right then we have full disclosure concept what does it say the information provided by financial statements are used by various stakeholders like owners, we have investors, we have government, managers, board, shareholders, right? They have to take various decisions like government has to take decisions about the tax, then, uh, you know, promoters and shareholders, board of directors, they have to take decision uh, how to uh, take the company to the next level. Okay, so they have to take important financial decisions. So it is important financial statement makes a full, fair and adequate disclosure of all the information which is relevant for taking financial dis uh, decisions. This is called full disclosure concept. Then we have consistency concept. Consistency concept is financial statement standard policy and policies should be consistent every year so that the statement of present year can be compared with the statement of previous year so okay so th the standard should be maintained every year so that we can compare things right you understand also statement can be compared with statements of other company that's why we are following these principles at the first place 
ओके देन वी हैव द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कंजर्वेटिज्म व्हाट इज कंजर्वेटिज्म प्रोवाइड इट प्रोवाइड्स गाइडेंस फॉर अकॉर्डिंग ट्रांजैक्शंस इन द बुक ऑफ अकाउंट्स प्रॉफिट शुड नॉट बी ओवरस्टेटेड ओके एंड कॉन्शियसली लुक्ड एट यू कैन नॉट ओवरस्टेट द प्रॉफिट यू नो दैट इन सत्यम स्कैम सत्यम आईटी कंपनी स्कैम दिस इज व्हाट was happened the overstated the profits and then share prices they it bubbled and then suddenly the bubble burst okay so we should not uh, you know overstate the profits okay then we have last one is objectivity objectivity concept states that accounting information should be recorded in objective manner free from bias of accountants and others this can be possible when every transaction is supported by verifiable document verified like you make a uh, you may, you make a purchase so the 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 person who is giving you goods okay who is selling your goods he will give you the bill so this is a valid uh, you know instrument valid uh, document right so th- this principle says that now we have two approaches basis of accounting one is cash basis cash in cash basis entry is made when payment is made okay when the when you make the payment right rather than the actual transaction happened like uh, the transaction happened four days back but i received payment today so i will uh, you know record the entry today this is not a good practice okay accrual basis entry is made when transaction is done rather than the payment okay then we have evidences of transactions are you know like cash memo invoice sales bills these are all the evidence which we require to support the transaction must be preserved until the auditing of accounts is done otherwise how will auditors uh, come to know okay the uh, the veracity of uh, the transaction then we have books of original entry books of original entry are uh, the journal the first one is uh, we have uh, journal journal proper these are the types okay the book in which transaction is recorded for the first time is called journal like koi bhi transaction ho any transaction is made is being made then we will record that that transaction in journal first okay so it is called book of original entry then we have uh, the types of journal journal proper cash book other day books okay this the question may be uh, the question may come which of the following is a book of original entry then we have ledger this is a principal book of accounting system okay it contains different accounts where transaction related to the account are recorded this is very important book okay ledger uh, all the financial decisions are made according to this book then we prepare balance sheet at the end of the year from the ledger okay then we have accounts are divided into five categories these are assets well then we have liabilities capital revenue expenses we have discussed uh, all of these things then at in the last uh, i would like to tell you one thing also uh, when we prepare the ledger or any you know registers these uh, 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 transaction registers okay then we put on the left side we put debit and on the right side we put credit this you have to remember right so this is it guys this is the end of uh, the video okay if you want to if you want uh, me to make uh, any other video uh, on this topic on accounting uh, please uh, put in comments i think uh, this should be sufficient for accounting uh, because only gap is was mentioned in epfo or and for other exams also right so this is the time for me to say goodbye from all of you and all the very best for your preparation thank you